One. I'll give you a bit of background on me before I get down to my experience from the other week. I'm a 36-year-old male and I live with my wife and my cat and dog. I suffer from depression and anxiety. And in the last 12 months, I've been off work from my managerial post for around nine of those months at different times. I've always felt like I had some sort of spooky gift due to some minor experiences I've had over the course of my life. To give you some examples, when one of my grandfathers died when I was eight years old, I saw him visit his house two or three times, although I only told my family about the first time that he visited. I saw my great-grandfather in his chair in his bedroom at my grandmother's house a few days after he passed away. I remember driving past my uncle as he approached the local bowling club in his bowling attire, and he waved at me as I waved back through the rear window of my father's car. I was about 12 and I pointed this out to my parents, who have no recollection of this, but it happened. The next day we found out that at that exact moment, my uncle was in hospital dying of a massive heart attack. My grandmother's perfume followed me for about two weeks after she died. When my father's best friend passed away, who was like a grandfather to me, I was followed by a robin pretty much every time I was outdoors, and the first time I visited the natural beauty spot that he introduced us to years and years before his passing. I asked one of these robins to perform some acts to prove to me that they had some link to this guy, and this little bird followed my requests pretty much to the letter. I've never been a particularly religious person. I don't really like the hierarchical power structures of organized religion and thus have tended to stay away from it during my life. I can't explain these things. They may be nothing. Perhaps I'm insane. I say that I may be insane due to my mental health issues. This week before my most recent experience, I was admitted to a private psychiatric care unit to help relieve the stress, anxiety and depression that I have been suffering from. In my quest to examine myself whilst being off on sick absence from work, I have discovered meditation, and I have read a fair bit on some of the Eastern philosophies on spiritual and mental well-being. I've tried using marijuana, which has helped in some respects, but masked some of the symptoms leading to the depression, getting a tighter grip on me than usual in the 17 years or so that I've suffered from it. I read about the prospect of using psilocybin in order to help my recovery also, and have subsequently tried a heroic dose around two weeks after this particular experience. And the effects of the psilocybin were completely different to my little psychotic break, which I'll describe shortly. Anyway, let me fill you in on what happened the other week, and I can fill in any obvious blanks later on and hopefully answer any questions anyone might have. The reason I'm posting this here is for some comfort, actually. I'd like to know if anyone here has ever experienced a similar situation. And I guess I'm looking for some confirmation that I'm not a basket case. So, two weeks before the incident, I was back at work, and was about to be given my full duties again after what we'll call a phased return with some diminished responsibilities to get me back into the swing of things at work. I knew that I felt anxious about the prospect of being back in at the deep end, but I'm a pretty confident guy and wasn't too worried about it. I'd been off work for five months during this bout of illness, and I was now ready to get back to it. The week my full responsibilities started again, I began to feel trapped and felt as though I was drowning. I began trying to avoid my job. My wife pointed out the other day that I had come up with about three million new business ideas which I wanted to try out, which in hindsight was clearly me trying to escape from the situation. When that didn't work, I spent my days disregarding my responsibilities and on news sites on my iPhone and social media sites. Now, I've been interested in some conspiracy theories since I was 14. Since I had access to the net, I guess. And when I began reading about some things that are currently going on in and around the world, which I had purposely stayed away from during my return to work, because let's face it, news brings us all down. 
Some things started to click with some of the things I'd learnt over the years. And some confirmations of some of these conspiracy theories came to fruition for me. I became terrified, and I had a meltdown. Two weeks later, I'm off work again, and I'm being admitted to the psych ward. Now, I got admitted on the Tuesday, and on the Friday evening, I was able to attend a meditation event. I was given some advice on a protective visualization to do in my own time. It invoked angels, chakras, and violet flame. I'm not going to lie, I was a wee bit skeptical of this stuff, but I'm pretty open-minded, so I went with it. The next day, I was again allowed out of the facility to spend the day with my wife and my parents. My wife and I visited her hometown, and on the way back to the ward that night, I decided that I'd had such a great day. I wanted to spend the night cuddled in bed with my wife and just chill. The hospital agreed to the pass for the evening, and we went home. I took some marijuana, I ingest it, I can't smoke it, and we watched some Netflix, Big Bang Theory. I also had some Grateful Dead playing softly in the background, through my phone on a Bluetooth speaker. This is important to the story. My wife had fallen asleep, but I was wide awake. The dope hadn't kicked in usually kicks in between 30 minutes and an hour after taking it. But on this occasion, I was three hours in and still nothing. Now I'm a big guy, and I have quite a strong tolerance for the dope, so I did take quite a big bit, but as I say, three hours in and nothing. Now this might seem strange, but on reflection, I believe I was being guided to what happened next. I decided to run through the meditation and visualization that I'd learned the night before. I ran through the aligning of my chakras, and I invoked the violet flame shield. And then, for some reason, I decided, again, no idea why, and this is why I believe I was being guided, to try and view the TV through my closed eyelids. I tried to concentrate my focus, and then relax my focus, and I switched between these two levels of focus a few times. Suddenly, some bright colors appeared in my field of vision, and then they faded to a dark indigo background, with a bright white and dark blue line running across this background in the middle of my field of vision, all whilst my eyes were still closed. The line was like a waveform because it was moving slightly, and then it started to take the form of a being, and then more started to form. Just their outlines, no faces or discernible features, I wasn't afraid, and I felt familiar with these things that were now communicating with me. They made me aware that I was safe, and that nothing bad was going to happen. Now at this point I assumed they were talking about my life in general. I began to feel warm tears streaming down my face. And then Big Bang Theory paused on the TV, the Grateful Dead music stopped playing through the Bluetooth speaker, and then Big Bang Theory's theme tune started playing through my cell phone speaker. I picked up my phone from the bedside table and the Netflix logo was uploading onto my screen. What the fuck? I felt a bit freaked out at this and sat up. My wife awoke and sat up too. I explained to her what had happened and decided to record an audio of myself explaining what had happened so that I didn't forget it later on. I thought the experience was over. I was wrong. The entities that had been speaking to me continued to communicate with me. Sometimes I heard their voices, other times I just knew what they were saying to me. My wife heard nothing. I felt huge waves of love, and I knew I was speaking to both of my grandmothers a few times. I spoke with a great uncle whose message had been passed on to me from a spiritualist a few weeks before. And we discussed how I thought it was strange that it had been him who had contacted me. I spoke with them for quite a while before they got down to business and explained to me that I was correct in my assertions as to what is going on in the world and I wasn't to worry because I could handle it and that they would help us, us being humanity. I asked them to wake up, as many people as possible, and I explained to them that no matter what happened, I wanted my wife to be with me and at my side throughout because she's my rock. 
It was at this point my wife's family began to manifest to the right of my own family. I'd never met any of these people, but my wife said that there was certainly a familiarity with them too because of how I was acting towards them, formal and respectful but friendly. I got into a bit of an argument with one of them, however, around this point, because for some reason they didn't feel that my wife was able to deal with whatever it is we're all going to have to deal with in the future. My wife got frightened here because I got angry. I won't go into details on this, but I turned to my family and requested that they back me up, and I felt resistance. I came to the conclusion that even in the afterlife, there is something to play for, so I took the gamble and explained to my family that my wife's family, ancestors, I hadn't even known about and still don't know, that if they didn't back me up, I'd ensure that they'd regret it at some point. I make no apologies for my arrogance. It's one of the only things that seems to give me strength at times. My wife left the room because of how afraid she was. Not that I would have harmed her in any way. The argument settled. And at this point, I think I experienced an ego death. Someone from my family took me to the brink of death, and I had to beg to allow me to remain here with my wife. It was as if they knew I'd been feeling suicidal and wanted to prove to me that there was no real substance to these thoughts for me. They made me ejaculate twice, I shit you not, and I urinated on my bed, something I've not done since I was about 18 and very drunk. I was taken to the brink again, only in a softer manner this time, and I felt great peace and love. The temptation to go with them was very strong, but... The love I feel for my wife wouldn't allow me to go with them. They asked me what I wanted. I told them I wanted them to help us deal with this shit planet and the minority of fuckwits who run it. I wanted time to prepare for whatever was coming. I wanted my wife to be there the entire time. I wanted to live. I wanted them to awaken as many people as possible to whatever is coming. And I wanted some space from them before they returned, because it had been pretty overwhelming. It took me a while to get all of them to leave me alone because there were a lot of excited individuals wanting to interact with me. And then finally they were gone. I snapped out of it, and I was back in control of myself again. My wife was and still is convinced it was real because of the way I was acting. It was as if I was in a trance. I was crying the whole time, sometimes tears of joy, sometimes tears of fear. I'm a bit more skeptical because of my mental health issues. But the more time passes, and the more that I can feel some of the depression and anxiety lifting, I have no explanation for this. I told my psychiatrist, and she only seemed concerned with whether or not the voices had stopped, which they had. And so she shrugged her shoulders and said not to worry which kind of led me to believe that she's heard similar stories before. She didn't give me any interaction as to whether these stories were due to insanity or paranormal. A few days later, when I asked to leave the hospital, she was more than happy to sign me off. So what do you think? Am I nuts? 2. Firstly, a bit of context. I'm currently studying at university, and I live in a small house with two other people, my boyfriend and one of my course mates. The layout of the house is important, as it's a bit unusual. There are four floors, the basement, which is actually a kitchen. First floor is the hallway, my boyfriend's room and where the front door is. Second floor is my bedroom and the bathroom. And the fourth floor is my course mate's converted loft bedroom. So yesterday was... The end of term, and I was going to be driving back home for Christmas. My course mate had already left, and had been gone for about an hour. My boyfriend had just gone out to get his car from his friend's house. He parks it there as we don't have enough parking permits for a third car on the street. I was hungry, so I decided to go down to the kitchen and make something to eat. While I was waiting for it to cook, I was sat on the sofa scrolling through Facebook. 
My boyfriend had been gone for about 10 to 15 minutes. Then, thought, I heard the front door unlock and someone come in. Lock the door behind them and walk quickly up the stairs to my room. Now this is the bit that I find creepiest. Usually whenever my boyfriend's been out somewhere and I'm in my room, he'll come upstairs and do a particular knock on my door. It sounds like tapping two fingers on the table quickly. So I always know when it's him knocking. And that's what I heard. I heard someone or something knock on my bedroom door exactly like he does. Now at this point I was quite surprised that he was back so early, because his friend lives about 15 minutes away. Maybe he'd forgotten something, I thought. So I got up and called his name up the stairs. No reply. Not that weird, though, because he's another floor up and might not have heard me. So I walk upstairs, and when I reach the second flight of stairs, I expected to see him at the top of the stairs. But there's no one there. That's when I started to get an uneasy feeling. But I rationalized with the logic part of my brain that maybe my boyfriend was playing a joke, so I proceed to go up the stairs. Reached my bedroom door and looked in. No one there. I even looked around the door in case he was hiding there. Then I looked in the bathroom again, no one there. At this point I was thoroughly creeped out. There was nowhere else someone could go or hide without having to walk downstairs where I was coming up the stairs. I proceeded back downstairs to the kitchen. Even though I knew my boyfriend hadn't come back, I texted him anyway asking if he had come back to the house. Obviously, he replied saying no, he'd been at his friend's the whole time. I sat there in the kitchen for a while, trying to figure out what the hell just happened. But even now, I don't know. It wasn't like I heard a few footsteps. I heard what sounded like a sequence of events that I'm familiar with, to the point where I fully believed that someone else was in the house. I've never had an experience like this before. There's been little things that I've always just dismissed as me mishearing something or a trick of the light, but nothing like this. If you guys have any suggestions as to what could have happened, I'd be more than happy to hear them. 3. I recently stumbled upon a Facebook page called Graveyard Shift. I'm sure some of you have heard of it. But for others, it's all about creepy encounters and haunted buildings and whatnot. I keep reading the articles where people share their creepiest experiences. And I got to thinking about mine and figured I may make my first ever Reddit post about it. Here's the story. Due to two shitty life events happening almost simultaneously, my apartment complex burning to the ground, followed by getting laid off from my job, I was living with my parents. Mind you, I was 23 at the time and had actually just moved back from across the country. I'll be honest, it didn't bother me that I was living with them. I mean, the amount of money I was saving was awesome. But after almost two years, I decided it was time to leave again. But I had made up my mind to buy a house and not rent. Something didn't sit right with me about paying money to something I can never own. Some people don't mind it, but it wasn't for me anymore. I live in a rural area of central Illinois, where I have to drive almost an hour to hit a small-sized city with a population of over 25,000. I found my dream home, several miles outside of town on a scarcely traveled road that came with a couple of acres of land was an old farmhouse built in the mid-1800s. The previous owners had everything updated and remodeled, within the last seven-ish years, so it wasn't a fixer-upper, and I got it for a steal. Just a couple of random facts that pertain to the story. The nearby community is small and very tight-knit. Everyone knows everyone and treat each other like family. With that being the case, there's not much crime. A car will get broken into every couple of months, and some local kids will vandalize something. That's about the extent of it. Also, I'm not the biggest believer of ghosts and spirits. I believe once you pass on from this world, you're done. So with that being said, I moved into my new house in January. 
This was a few years back when the winter sucked, and we had several weeks in a row of negative temps. One of the only drawbacks to this house is there's no heating or air conditioning for the upstairs. And like I said, it was balls cold out. Even though I had space heaters running, it was too cold for me most nights to sleep in my bedroom upstairs. It was just me and my dog, so crashing on the couch downstairs with heat wasn't a big deal. Plus, my TV was downstairs, and I like falling asleep with it on. So it's been about two weeks since I moved in, and I'm sleeping on my couch. It's a clear night, with a bright moon out. My front door is custom-made and mostly glass, so there's plenty of light coming into the house. I had left my window blinds pulled up about four inches or so, so you could still see out the bottom. It was probably two or three in the morning, and I snap awake. I mean, I'm awake and alert in an instant. Like the shit you see in movies. I don't know what woke me. It wasn't windy and there wasn't any traffic on the road. But like I said, I'm instantly fully awake. I was sleeping on side and facing the windows and... I can see the outline of what looks like a person, but... I'm not positive because there's bushes along the fence that you can see out of the window. It's just standing there. Maybe five seconds go by... I can't be sure because I'm starting to panic. What makes it look worse is I look down towards my feet, and I can see my dog was sleeping in the recliner. She's fully awake now and staring out the same window at the shadow figure growling. And every dog owner knows this next part. You can tell a difference in your dog's growl. That wasn't a, there's a squirrel in the yard and I need to get it growl. This was a low, slow growl. The one where you can hear the fear in your dog's growl. I'm shitting my pants at this point. I can't help it, but I look back out the window, and I swear whatever this thing was was backing away from the house. What makes me wonder if it was a person or something else was it seemed to float instead of walk when it left. Just a smooth glide into the darkness. I waited about five minutes and turned on a light. Made sure all doors and windows were locked. Grabbed my 45 and said, Fuck the cold, I'm going to my bedroom. 4. So far, I've only posted the nice experiences I've had. They haven't all been nice, however. Two stand out that were generally unpleasant. Number 1. In the house I grew up in, the one with great grandma who hung around in the basement either watching me and my brother play or doing laundry at night. There were also shadow creatures in the attic and upstairs hallway. The hallway ones took human shapes on the walls and, while they never physically hurt anything, they left a temperature drop and a feeling of dread and fear whenever they appeared or moved by. My brother, myself and both of my parents saw them frequently during the day as well as in the evening. I always assumed they were the cause of nightmares that I'd have, but obviously have no proof of that. Most times it was a corner of the eye sighting, but on occasion one that stretched from floor to ceiling in height would stop and just stand there, allowing itself to be looked at. Though looking at it was never fun, and I don't think I ever did for more than a couple of seconds, as the longer you looked, the stronger the sense of dread and fear got. Number two, I was in the attic. We'd often see a small black dog that would run along the walls. That one was not kind at all, and would try to push people down the stairs or knock them off their feet if they tried to stand up in the attic at all. You'd feel like you'd been punched by something hard enough to knock the wind out of you, and would generally stumble and fall. If you didn't try to stand in the attic, it wouldn't hit you until you got near the stairs. More than once, I and my mother were nearly pushed down the stairs by it. So we just kind of learned that when on the stairs, grab onto the railing tightly, and when near the stairs, to grab onto something solid like a beam, in case you got hit. We weren't the only ones that experienced it either. I had friends that told me they felt like something pushed them or was watching them if they went into our attic. We'd sometimes go up there to play with old toys as kids. Whatever that was could easily be seen, even with the lights on, 
and always stuck to the walls or gave the impression that it was a shadow on the wall. And it never left the attic. When I was 16 or so, I recall getting just incredibly, irrationally angry at it, after being shoved and coming about half an inch from actually falling down the stairs. Shouted that if it came near me again, I'd send it back to whatever nightmare spawned it. I have no idea how I planned on doing that, but it must have sounded convincing enough as whatever it was, retreated to the very back of the attic, and the room itself went freezing cold, which, for summer, was not usually the case. The attic was generally 10 to 15 degrees warmer than the rest of the house. After that, I got the sense that whatever it was was wary about me, and I'd get small shoves, but never anything to knock me off my feet though it still would shove anyone else pretty damn hard when they got near the stairs. They're not in the house anymore, from what I can tell, or if they are, they don't appear often anymore. And if I had to guess, I'd say they were maybe also bound to the wash tubs in the basement that seemed to have kept good old great-grandma around all those years, my mom mentioning that the wind gust in the attic being gone coincided with when they removed those old wash tubs from the basement. At any rate. 5. Past My first experience with the paranormal happened around 9 years ago. I was dropping my sister off at her mom's house. It was late. My mom wasn't expecting us, so I had to knock on the door until she woke up. As I was knocking, I could see a shadow through the curtain that was covering the window on the front door. I thought it was my mom possibly standing there to see who was knocking on her door so late. I said loudly, Mom, it's me. Door still didn't open. I knocked again. Then I heard a voice say, It's Tracy. Mind you, my mom lives alone, and my father passed away ten years before. It was a man's voice that spoke. My sister heard the voice as well. The voice did not sound human. The only way to describe it is was as though it was a recording being played back in slow motion with a crackling sound in the background. My sister and I were freaked out when my mom opened the door and we found out that there was no man in her house. Present. My family and I moved out into the country a few years ago. Not long after living here, I started seeing a shadow figure walking through the hallway and out the back door. Almost every time I see it, it's walking out my bathroom, down the hall, and out the back door. My husband doesn't believe in ghosts, so I didn't tell him what I saw. I noticed that I only see the shadow every Saturday between 2.30 and 3 a.m. One Saturday I was standing in the hall waiting to see it. It passed right through me. Everything went black, like something covering my eyes for about two seconds. Now, after I had been seeing this shadow figure for over a year, my husband saw it himself. He was very freaked out, but by the next day he was questioning what he saw. Now, recently I've been seeing it during the day, standing in my daughter's room. I always ignore it and pretend I'm not seeing it. Last week, as I was getting dirty clothes out of my daughter's room, as I was walking out of her door, a shoe was thrown at me. As I ran to the living room, our two cats were running to the bedroom. I went back in the bedroom. Both cats were in there, staring at the ceiling. I looked up, but didn't see anything. Now, only three days ago, same thing. I'm getting dirty clothes out of my daughter's room. And as I'm walking out of the room, a shoe is thrown at me. But it hits the bedroom door. It really has me stumped. Why would whatever this shadow thing is, why is it all of a sudden throwing shoes? And at me? What are these shadow figures? Anyone else experienced this? Hey everyone, Hellfreezer here. And thank you very much for listening to 5 True Paranormal Stories, Episode 28. Thank you very much to everyone who has allowed me to use their stories in this video. Well, happy to say I actually hit the 27,000 subscriber mark the other day. 
It was a very nice thing to wake up to that day. So thank you very much everyone who has subscribed recently and thank you very much to everyone who has continued to remain one of my loyal subscribers. And apparently there's a few of you who have actually had to resubscribe. So thanks to those of you who actually spotted that you were no longer subscribed and uh, liked me enough to resubscribe. That is very, very much appreciated. And I think I'm just going to cut the rest of it short for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening and take very good care of yourselves.